Um, uh, well, you know, uh, I, she's one of the main reasons why the channel exists because I saw what she did. But just, you know, she just goes around telling bands like, "This is this is awesome," you know, "Keep going," and sometimes that's all people need, you know, just to just to carry on that little boost to know that people dig it and it counts you know i think it, it when beth's like hey you know this is beth chuck's sister it, it's i swear man it makes people's lives like to see that she's left a comment and and this kind of thing but um and she knows that like she knows how important it is to the to the receivers of that so she gives of her time and i think the greatest gift that i've been able to give her back is to take the load off. Two years ago, well, I, I can't really go into the legal issues, but things were really, really awful. You had our situation with Sony. You had, oh, oh, for the first five records, you had a sort of an unresolved issue with Nuclear Blast. Over the last record, you had, um, oh, the, the, the horrendous circumstance with the Dutch guy relating to the unfinished control tonight. Just merchandise rip-offs just one guy came in and ripped off you know a, a sum of money it just it just lots of crap and now all of that is resolved one thing after another was resolved and now we're like a force and with the new deal with relapse the, she doesn't have any of the worries that, and the headaches that she had to deal with and she's not a professional music industry person she's just a big sister <laughs> Trying to protect her her brother's legacy. Well, um, I did uh, I did a little video just sharing um, sharing you know the uh, the three three CD sound of perseverance with the world. Yeah. Just And um, in that, I just made the assumption that it must mean so much to all you guys that this thing is even is is even able to exist uh, because a couple of years ago, I can imagine it wasn't even a vision. It wasn't even a thought that. These things, these things can happen. So, um, yes, yeah, it, it real look. I'm, I'm not going to make any kind of negative or disparaging comments on any of the industry people out there who have worked with death without much feedback from the family. Um, the the issue is is that now we're really an organization. We're an organization that can look at things sort of from the from the sky down. We can see all the trees and. And we know what's going on over here, what's going on in Europe, what's going on in North America, where we stand property level about all of this stuff. And that is something that Beth doesn't have to worry about now. So she can have the time when she wants at her leisure to respond to fans, to take part or not to take part. Like Jane, for example, she has now made a decision that she just doesn't want to to have that interaction for her own for her own reasons and we can take the slack now and because there's an organization and and there's going to be a metal crusade and there's going to be all this stuff happening she feels like it's sort of a juggernaut that's happening she's, and she's kind of done done her bit and the, she's done her bit and it was therapeutic for the fans it was therapeutic for Jane it was good for everyone and now she can sit back and enjoy her retirement years and and I'll f keep feeding back stuff to her and vice versa get her opinion on stuff and uh, and everybody's happy but yeah I mean uh, you know I've, I've never spoken to Jane I don't know uh, much about Jane but um, you can you know you can read about someone and you know you can read their words and that's kind of enough and um, you know you said it yourself it has been I'm sure what the fans have given to Jane has been invaluable. You said it yourself; it was it's been therapeutic for her. You know, I mean, uh, there's one thing there's one thing losing someone, but to lose the way Chuck was lost. I mean, there's no way it it, it could any you know there's nothing pleasant in the story of how it all came to pass. So no, I mean, I can't. I, I have two children. I can't understand what it's like to lose a child, and and Jane has lost two sons, and she has said to me herself, and I don't think that it's it's violating any confidence that the 
interaction with the fans has been what brought her through it all. Of course, she has her daughter and she has her grandson, and and that's invaluable. But beyond that, it's the fans. It's the, those who care about Chuck enough to want to write to her that uh, that has gotten her through it. I mean, in those early days, in the post-2000 period. And I think now she's at a point where she feels that it's in good hands. I'm very honored that she feels that way. And uh, and it's not that she doesn't want to. She's, she's formed very, very good friendships over the years with some of these people who, of course, show up at her doorstep. There have been endless numbers of fans who have just shown up in Orlando, made that pilgrimage <laughs> to Orlando, and have just looked her up and shown up at her door. And she's not the kind of person that would do anything other than invite them in. Even at great risk when you think about it. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. A death fan. <laughs> the zombie controls my life, you know. Uh, she's never turned anyone away. The, the ones that only like scre- scream bloody gore and none of the others. Yeah, like Exactly, yeah. I, I think that Chuck really lost the plot after Leprosy, <laughs> you know. Well, uh, um, Eric, um, let's, let's streamline this process a little bit um, because... I believe we both have the ability to talk about anything but the question, uh, which is a skill. Yeah, I have the sun starts coming up on your end of the pond. Yeah, yeah, it's only like four in the morning, and um, I wasn't like absolutely knackered when we started, so that's yeah, good. That, sorry. that's good. No, um, f- anything for you, Eric. Special Eric, Eric Grife, the Eric, the Grife, the one and only, the dude. Um, no, but come on, come on, Eric. It's this is serious, Eric. You know, this is this is serious. This is death metal. This is death, death metal. Death, death metal. Okay, the 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 next question, the big one. Let let's try and get through these. What's the release schedule for the death reissues? Uh, many people have asked this, but I'm throwing two names out there: Martin and Hector Barragan Zavala. Uh, what gay? Um, albums, albums, Eric. Releases, come on, hit me. Reissues. The, the order. The next reissue is Human. That's going to come out at the end of June. Okay, that's. I've already let the cat out of the bag with that one. It is a remix, not a remastering. Sony lost the mixes of that album. I can't be more clear. Uh, they lost the mixes North that Jor- Scott Williams did. North- so instead of ripping off the fans and remastering it from a, a Century Media CD, we decided that uh, since Sony did find the two-inch multi-track tapes, that we would have um, it in, in, mixed. A, in, in, a, in a way. In a way, uh, Eric, this leads to a, this leads to a few other questions. Um, the hu- one, uh, what's his name? Ar- Arvind Rajan asks. Um, he loved the organic feel and sound of Human, and he was hoping that in today's world of digitally just overly produced music is human by the sounds of things will human retain its original characteristics no no uh, um you've had this question uh, no i'm just i'm just processing the thoughts that are running through my head there's a lot of them i understand where the question is coming from of course the idea wasn't that we were going to remix it and and master it so that it would be louder which is the main blabbermouth uh negative comments were that why would why would you have to remaster it when it was so good in the first place the fact is yes it was good in the first place but it wasn't as good as it could have been in the first place chuck knew that we all know that um it's not a slam on anyone in particular or any set of circumstances it's just the way it is you can't even hear the bass on the original to to um to be honest though um, mixes so i I kind of i kind of slammed those fans in the video that i did like i i I can't stand the view of um you know oh what's the like why do it like why breathe you know what a stupid thing to say well look it's the the fact is that the contract ran out right for example on human or or or, on, or excuse me, on the sound of perseverance. The contract ran out. We have to put it out again. We have the opportunity because the artist says to me, um, you know, I never really liked my cover. It was it was one of the first 
commercially released covers I did. This is Travis Smith. I would really like the opportunity of, of bettering it. And then I said to myself after talking with Beth, well, that's what Chuck would have wanted. Chuck would have said he wanted it to be the best it could be. And if the original artist who was working purely off of Chuck's idea says to me, this is the opportunity we have to to I'm going to make that decision. It doesn't cost the fans any more money. In fact, uh, it, that it's that's not the case. So with Human, the 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 fact that we can't find or that Sony has misplaced. Uh, you guys are still talking. Oh, that's my son Sam. <laughs> Sam, yes, we're still talking. That was such a long time. Like like about like we're about like. Talking Shut up, about Sam. Ten minutes. Okay, Sam. It was lovely seeing you. Now shut the door. <laughs> no, really, I'm I'm doing oh. something right now, pal. See, this is as organic as it gets. Bye. Shut the door. Thank you. Goodbye. It was nice giving birth to you. Uh, Eric, or, why do you why do you keep kids in your house? I know. I I, I don't even have a license. They're like. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, but this is the the fact is is that we couldn't find Sony can't find the actual mixed. Recording. So, what are we supposed to do? We have to put it out again. Sony suck. It's got to be reissued. Sony. Eventually, put out copies. Amazon's going to run out of copies, and where the hell are they going to get them? So, yeah. Relapse has to make copies of it. And if we don't have the original mix, then to duplicate it means that we go and we take. I don't want to go on eBay and buy a Relativity Sony mm. version of Human and then take yeah. it to a mastering lab and say, hey, can you take this CD and make it sound better? That would have been a ripoff. So, because we were able to push Sony into finding the two-inch multi-track tapes, obviously they sent it to us, knowing you know uh, that how valuable it would be to us. Yeah, and the first sure. person I thought of to remix it was Jim Morris, so, the owner of Morris Sound. Do, what do and we, he um, did it. So, do we know what's coming after Human? You mean you don't want me to finish telling you the story about human? Because I could go on for hours. No, I'm kidding. Let me just say this to end that question. The mixes blow away the original human release. For a fact. Because it uses today's technology to get the best out of Scott's, uh, Scott's original recordings, which Jim said were fantastic, and I know were fantastic. It's way more raw the guitars are way more in your face. You can hear the bass. It just sounds so cool. And wait till people have it at the end of June. That's all I'll say on the subject. Okay. Okay. The next release will be individual thought patterns. Why? Because it's right on the table. It. We have all the stuff already how laid about, out. How about after that? Do we know what's after that? I don't know. I, I don't know. And I'm going to relapse uh, towards the end of May. We will have a production meeting. We will sit down to see exactly where we're at. The idea was that we weren't going to put it in any kind of order. Well, it was based on what material we had to hand. So whatever comes first will be whatever we have put together. We already have the liner notes from the various people. And, uh, and individual thought patterns. We, we went to Perry Grayson, who is a, a longtime friend of ours. Uh, a writer with the magazines during Chuck's lifetime and um, and we asked him to do a note we also asked Gene Hoagland and they've done it so I mean we have the material so that'll be the next record it's as simple <laughs> as that we're working on leprosy and spiritual we're working on uh, Scream Bloody Gore and as they're developed whatever one is finished first is the one that will be out you've, first you've, got, you've only got the slight challenge now Eric of once they're done um, you need to create more death albums out of <laughs> yeah. So um, uh, good good luck with that. But no, um... yeah, it's limited. That's that's what I said in the beginning. It's a, it's a very it's a difficult thing when you're dealing with uh, a man behind it who is no longer alive. There's no way that there will ever be a death. It's not like we're going to put a tour on. And believe me, people have asked. People have asked why you which you have former members of death touring around with guest singers. And, and say it's a death tribute. We're not going to do that. We're not going to do any I albums. Think, um, with, since it, it's not death without Chuck. So all we can do is just glean through yeah, the but, box, boxes of material we have. And if we think that something's worthy, we'll put it out.